as a one-year-old, full-blooded English bulldog, full-blooded English bulldog, born in Fallbrook, California, on October 22, 2022. He is named after Major General Bruno Hoku, who at the time of his death was the first general officer killed during the Vietnam War. Major General Hoku was also the commanding general of the depot from November of 1963 to February of 1967. General Hoguth was awarded the Distinguished Service Medal, the Legion of Merit with Combat B for Valor, the Navy Commendation Medal with Gold Star in lieu of Third Award, and the Purple Heart with Gold Star in lieu of Third Award. Lance Corporal Bruno continues the tradition of a long line of Marine Corps Bulldog mascots dating back to 1921, when Brigadier General Smedley Butler appointed Sergeant Major Jiggs as the first Bulldog mascot for Marine Corps Barracks Quatico. Lance Corporal Bruno is being escorted by the Office of Communication Strategy and Operations, Corporal Sarah Grogock. an important part in the making of a United States Marine. Lieutenant Kai Chur, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy, will deliver the graduation prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Let us pray. Holy, 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 God of power and might, we invoke your blessings on this graduate ceremony as we proudly present to you and our nation the 553 new Marines today. For the answer to call to serve the nation, pursuing excellence in day-to-day -day life, following the, in the footsteps of Chesty Pollard, John Bethlehem, and every noble man and woman in the Marine Corps history. Who are standing here is more than a 0311 a rifleman, but the future leaders of the Corps. Therefore, we pray that your, the word of God will be their guidance and protection. Wherever they go, your heavenly wisdom will go with them. God, we are also grateful for their families and friends, for their support. Because of them, we are able to pr 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 practice trust and unity and building a better community for the future generation. Moreover, Lord, we thank you for watching over us and sustaining us as a nation. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. The Commanding General, Marine Corps Recruit Depot, San Diego, welcomes you to what is a historical event in the life of a Marine. Their graduation from boot camp. Approximately 40 weeks each year for the past 100 years, new Marines have departed San Diego First Service with units of the Marine Corps around the globe. The primary mission of the Recruit Depot is to provide basic training to recruits enlisted west of the Mississippi, which represents approximately 51% of all applicants in the Marine Corps each year. The Depot is also home to Recruiter School and Drill Instructor School. All of our efforts here are geared toward one end, producing America's finest fighting force, the United States Marine Corps. This morning, Company L, 3rd Recruit Training Battalion, Recruit Training Regiment, will form and march in the parade. Following the pass and review, the graduating Marines will return front and center of the reviewing stand for final dismissal. The staff for today's parade is comprised of Marines from the Recruit Training Regiment. The Commander of Troops is Captain James R. Schuler, and the parade adjutant is First Lieutenant Raylin Brackett.
Marching in today's parade are 553 graduating Marines from Company L. Among the 553 Marines are two Marines who displayed outstanding performances in two individually graded events. Private Remington O'Neill from Platoon 3,250 is the company high shooter, scoring 340 out of 350. Private Brian Breen from Platoon 3,255 is the most physically fit Marine, scoring a 296 out of 300 on the physical fitness test and a 296 out of 300 on the combat fitness test. They will be receiving awards from the Marine Corps Association and Foundation. Present today is the company honor graduates recruiter, Staff Sergeant Jose Hernandez. Representing the primary marksmanship instructor with the platoon high shooting average from weapons and field training battalion is Sergeant Parker K. Sansbury. Recruit training is comprised of subjects required to produce basic Marines who function effectively in garrison, are trained in rudimentary individual field and combat skills, and practice the personal and professional traits which distinguishes them as Marines. Examples of these traits are discipline, the achievement of self-control and self-awareness which assures respect for authority, instant and willing obedience to orders, and the self-reliance to maintain or improve those traits which exemplify a Marine. Military bearing, consistently demonstrating military presence and personal awareness, as well as the proper wearing and maintenance of uniforms. Esprit de corps, acquiring the common spirit of the Marine Corps that inspires enthusiasm, devotion, pride, initiative, teamwork, aggressiveness, determination, moral courage, integrity, camaraderie, and the burning desire to work with and for others towards excellence in common goals. For 248 years, Marines have fought and won whenever and wherever the nation calls. In the harshest conditions, over the most brutal terrain, and against the most formidable enemies, Marines defend the ideals of freedom with grit and tenacity. Although battlefields change and capabilities evolve, history proves that true victory comes from the individual Marine with steeled resolve. The drive to overcome any obstacle, and the warrior spirit to fight on against all odds. It takes that steadfast faithfulness, semper fidelis, to core, country, and each other that abounds throughout our storied legacy. Marines today remain in combat for deployed throughout the world, confronting every challenge with courage, loyalty, and faithfulness. They are resolved to be the most ready when the nation is least to defend freedom anytime and anywhere, to stand ready to aid those devastated by natural disasters, to pay tribute to those who have forged our proud legacy, and to honor the families and loved ones who faithfully stand beside us. For the Marines of Company L, today marks the end of the 13-week recruit training cycle. They have marched countless miles at Camp Pendleton, as well as on this parade deck, and have been trained as are all Marines as basic riflemen. In addition, due to an intensive physical training program, their strength and endurance have doubled since their arrival aboard the recruit depot. They are Marines, qualified to take their places in the ranks of the world's finest fighting organization.
platoon are now being aligned from left to right in order to get them into their exact positions for the parade. next portion of the ceremony will be our national anthem. We welcome veterans and members of the armed forces to join us in rendering appropriate honors with a military salute. For guests who have not served in the military, it is proper etiquette during the national anthem to place their right hands over their hearts and for those in the audience wearing headgear to remove it. Will the guests please rise for the presentation of the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Thank you. Please be seated. At the command. 
at the command. Post the colors. The color guard moves into position within the parade. This signifies that the entirety of the parade has been formed and is ready to be presented to the command. Following the command, following the command, parade rest. The parade adjutant will give the command sound off, which signals the band to parade forward of the assembled Marines while playing military marching music.
The parade adjutant now presents the assembled command to the commander of troops. Command, Officer Center March. All unit commanders and guide on bearers march to the front and center of the formation. Historically, it was at this point that commanding officers would issue orders and instructions to the unit commanders. Following this, the unit leaders would face about, return to their units, and pass the information along to their Marines.
Throughout our nation's history, millions of men and women have earned the title United States Marine. Many who have helped shape our history join us here today. In keeping with the tradition of once a Marine, always a Marine, we would like to recognize them. At this time, those in the audience who have served as Marines, please rise. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for their dedicated service to Corps and country. Thank you. Please be seated. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the battalion commander for 3rd Recruit Training Battalion, Lieutenant Colonel M. Matthew Phelps. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, distinguished guests. On behalf of the Commanding General of Marine Corps Recruit Depot San Diego in the Western Recruiting Region, Brigadier General James Ryan, and the Commanding Officer of the Recruit Training Regiment, Colonel Peter Rumler, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the graduation ceremony for Company L. It is also my distinct pleasure to welcome this morning's parade reviewing official, Colonel Eric Herman, Commanding Officer of Marine Corps Air Station Miramar, California. Sir, we're honored to have you with us this morning. You'll hear his very impressive biography shortly. Now, before I talk about the remarkable young people that you came to see graduate, I'd like to acknowledge first a few groups of people who made their success possible. First, let me recognize the distinctive Marines you see, those impressive Marines you see wearing those distinctive green campaign covers. They are, of course, the legendary Marine Corps drill instructors. Drill instructors are the critical element in the transformation of civilians into United States Marines. From the moment a recruit arrives here, a drill instructor is with them 24 hours a day, seven days a week, everywhere that they go. It takes a special Marine to be a drill instructor, and these Marines are extraordinary. Their impact on the Marines is permanent. Let's face it, of the thousands of people we meet in our lives, very few will leave a lasting impression. But no Marine will ever forget the name, the face, or that gentle, loving voice of their drill instructor. Seated next to the reviewing stand is another special group of people. These are the families of the officers and drill instructors of Company L. These families know firsthand the time, dedication, and sacrifice that it takes to make a Marine. They take on additional responsibilities at home so that their Marines can be here focused on the mission. We couldn't do this without their love and support, so please give a round of applause to the families of Lima Company. Next, every single one of these Marines' careers, their journey begins with one of the hardworking Marine Corps recruiters who canvasses the nation on their mission to enlist the next generation of Marines. Today, Marine Corps Recruiting Command is represented by Staff Sergeant Hernandez of Recruiting Substation, East Las Vegas, Nevada. Staff Sergeant Hernandez was the one who recruited our honor graduate, Lance Corporal Foster Allen. It was Staff Sergeant Hernandez who first recognized Lance Corporal Foster Allen's potential and offered him the opportunity to become a Marine. Thanks again for being here. And finally, while most of recruit training happens right down here in San Diego, the recruits spent several weeks up north with the talented instructors at Weapons and Field Training Battalion. They learned essential combat skills 
including marksmanship training, where they learn to deliver precision rifle fire against targets at staggering distances, up to 500 yards out. We're honored to have Weapons and Field Training Battalion represented today by Sergeant Parker Sansbury, one of the primary marksmanship instructors who made, the, who made lethal Lima as lethal as they are. Thanks for being here. Now that we talk about these incredible young people, they are truly some of the best this nation has to offer. When they arrived, they were young and fit, 18 years old on average, and in better shape than most people their age. Over 99% of them are high school graduates, and three had already earned college, had, have already earned college degrees. Beyond that, they demonstrated a courage and commitment that few of their peers could muster when they raised their right hand and swore a solemn oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. They come from every corner of the globe. In this case, 10 different countries as far away as Ukraine, Peru, Togo, and some came from right across the street here in San Diego. But wherever they came from, it was a common goal that brought them together, the goal of becoming United States Marines. Three months ago, these young people embarked on one of the most demanding, level, the most demanding training programs in the world when they stepped off the buses and onto our yellow footprints. Since they, they've been undoubtedly been tested, they've been trained and evaluated in the attributes that make Marines unique in the world. They've learned battlefield-tested warfighting skills so that when their nation calls, they'll be ready for the fight. We've hardened them by developing their physical and mental toughness so that they will never quit or give up against any odds. We've indoctrinated them in our core values of honor, courage, and commitment so that they'll be Marines of exemplary character in peace or at war. And we've instilled in them a bias for intelligent action so that as small unit leaders They'll be able to decide, act, and communicate in the future operating environment in any climate place. I hope when you reunite your Marine, you'll notice a few changes. They should stand a little taller, look a little leaner. They'll look you in the eye, and they'll use strange phrases like, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. You won't have to tell them to clean up after themselves or finish a meal, and I promise you, they know how to make their beds. But beyond those things is what I'm most proud of. Through their courage in coming here, through blood, sweat, and tears, through physical, mental, emotional, and character transformation, they fully committed themselves to serving our Corps, and I am honored to stand alongside them. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to present to you this morning 553 young people who can now and forever claim the title United States Marine. I'd ask you to excuse me while I turn to address the company one last time. Good morning, Marines. Now, Lima, I know when you got here a few months ago, the furthest thing from your mind was graduation. More than likely, you were thinking, what in the world have I gotten myself into? And how do I get them to stop yelling at me? But here you stand today having accomplished something that most people would never dare attempt. When you get home this weekend on your well-deserved leave, people will be proud of you, as they should be. They'll look up to you. They'll be impressed and amazed by your transformation. Your friends will ask you how you did it. And when they ask you, I want you to take them for a walk. Right on down to your recruiter's office, because I promise you, your drill instructors would love to meet your friends. Remember that the strength of our corps doesn't come from any weapon system or piece of equipment, but from the warfighting spirit of individual Marines working together as a team. At its essence, war is a violent conflict of wills, of spirits, and so it is your spirit, your character, that matters most. Our corps' legacy of being first to fight and never giving up now rests with you for safekeeping. The Eagle Globe and anchor that we handed you atop the Reaper as you finished the Crucible represents that legacy. And for as long as you wear it, 
You represent the entire history of our Corps and every Marine who came before you. Be proud of yourselves. Be proud of what you've accomplished. Be proud of what you now represent. As you go forward in your lives and your careers, be worthy of the title Marine. On behalf of the officers and drill instructors and all the support personnel here at Marine Corps Recruit Depot San Diego, let me be the first to issue fair winds and following seas. Congratulations, Marines, and welcome to our Corps. Now taking their position in the reviewing area is today's parade reviewing official, Colonel Eric R. Herman, Commanding Officer, Marine Corps Air Station, Miramar, California. He is accompanied by Colonel Peter M. Rumler, Commanding Officer, Ruck Crew Training Regiment, Marine Corps Crew Depot, San Diego, California. Graduated from the United States Naval Academy in May of 2000, earning his Bachelor's of Science degree in Economics and received his commission as a second lieutenant. Following graduation from the basic school in January of 2001, he underwent Naval Flight Officer training at Naval Air Station Pensacola, Florida and earned his designation as a Naval Flight Officer in June of 2002. He has served in a variety of challenging billets in numerous commands to include legal officer, awards officer, S-1 officer, aircraft division officer, and quality assurance division officer, Marine Tactical Electronic Warfare Squadron 3 at Marine Corps Air Station, Cherry Point, North Carolina. EA-6 Bravo Division Head, Marine Aviation Weapons and Tactics, Squadron 1. Operations Officer and Executive Officer, VMA Q3 at Marine Corps Air Station, Cherry Point, North Carolina, where he deployed on a unit deployment program to Marine Corps Air Station, Iwakuni, Japan, and deployed to Inslerk Air, Air Base, Turkey, in support of Operation Inherent Resolve. Aviation Colonel's Monitor, Manpower Management, Manpower and Reserve Affairs at Marine Corps Base, Quantico, Virginia. Colonel Herman is currently serving as the commanding officer for Marine Corps Air Station, Miramar, California. Colonel Herman has accumulated over 2,400 flight hours in the EA-6 Bravo Prowler. His personal awards include the Meritorious Service Medal with three gold stars, Air Medal Strike Flight with numeral 15, the Navy Marine Corps Accommodation Medal with gold star, and the Navy Marine Corps Achievement Medal. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Colonel Eric R. Herman. Sir, the praise for March the command and review. in review is a tradition within all military units, allowing the unit commander to formally inspect the unit under their charge.
over the entire history of the depot, Marines that have crossed this parade deck have deployed into conflicts around the world where we have earned our trust and dependability. Places such as Guadalcanal, where Marines worked with United States soldiers to win the first offensive victory during World War II. Iwo Jima, where uncommon valor was a common virtue, and Marines rose the national flag on top of Mount Sarabachi. Incheon, where Marines assaulted three beaches simultaneously and outflanked North Korean forces. Kuei City, where Marines defeated North Vietnamese forces during the Tet Offensive. Granada, where military members were a part of Operation Urgent Fury to help stabilize a local government. Kuwait, where Marines were a part of Operation Desert Shield and Desert Storm and fought to liberate the country from Iraqi forces. Fallujah, where Marines surrounded the city within 24 hours to commence Operation Vigilant Resolve and take back the city from Al-Qaeda forces. Marja, where Marines worked with Afghan, British, Canadian, Danish, and Estonian forces in order to remove Taliban forces from the last stronghold in the Helmand province. Even now, Marines are stationed worldwide to answer the call when they are needed. This parade deck has had many legendary Marines march across it, and they have never forgotten the feeling of earning their place among our ranks. Ladies and gentlemen, as the national flag passes directly in front of you, please rise. Once it passes, you may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commander of Troops, Captain James R. Schuler, and the regimental staff. San Diego, Marine Corps Recruit Depot, San Diego, California. Series Commander, First Lieutenant Christopher M. Brakey, and Platoon 3249, Senior Drill Instructor Staff Sergeant Micah F. Shaw. Staff Sergeant David Ochoa. Two, three 
50,251. Senior drill instructor, Staff Sergeant Nicholas J. Valenzuela. Regimental Color Guard is led on the march by the Regimental Color Sergeant, Drill Instructor Sergeant Emmanuel J. Just. <laughs> Series 3,253. Series Commander, Captain Matthew B. Spencer. Platoon 3,253. Senior Drill Instructor Staff Sergeant Jordan G. Robles. Senior Drill Instructor, Staff Sergeant Aaron C. Ruiz. Platoon 3,255. Senior Drill Instructor, Staff Sergeant Anthony J. Mejias. Turn to page 21 of your graduation pamphlets. You will find the Marines Hymn. The Marines Hymn has a history dating back to 1859 and has a long standing tradition for Marines to face the direction of the music and stand at attention when it is heard. It is now directed that all Marines present and who have served honorably, and ladies and gentlemen, you're all encouraged to join. Sing the words to the first verse as Marine Band San Diego performs Anchors Away, followed by the Marines Hymn. Will the guests please rise? Please be seated. The Marine Corps' uniqueness and strength as an elite fighting force is directly attributable to the magnificent effort of the drill instructors and company officers who train and supervise the recruits. 
the distinct qualities of spirit and discipline, the heart and soul of every Marine have been developed, nurtured, and ingrained in recruits through their observance and relationship with their drill instructors and officers. Recruit training is the very foundation of the Corps. Each year, recruit training provides thousands of America's finest young men and women with the basic knowledge and skills to function in a profession characterized by its own set of high values and tough standards. The most important thing we do in the Marine Corps is make Marines. The individual Marine is the Corps. That is what we do here. For the Marines graduating today, the long, arduous journey of the last 13 weeks is but a small step into the future of the Marine Corps. As they prepare to fill the ranks of our Corps, they do so with their unquestionable support for the high ideals and standards of the United States of America and the United States Marine Corps. Although Company L prepares for their final dismissal from boot camp, their initial training is not over. Soon after graduation, they will report to the School of Infantry, Camp Pendleton, California, where they will continue to be trained to serve as an effective member of a Marine Rifle Squad. The intense initial training that every Marine undergoes is designed to instill the fundamental premise that every Marine is a rifleman. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we would like to introduce to you the Marines responsible for ensuring the success of the difficult transition required to become a Marine. The company commander is Captain James R. Schuler. The company first sergeant is First Sergeant James A. Mabe. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause for the company staff of Lima Company. The next portion of the ceremony will be the traditional function of retiring the guidons. The guidons have been carried by the platoons throughout recruit training and are being retired to symbolize the disbanding of platoons. All similar units in the Marine Corps carry such guidons, which identify the unit and are a source of pride to each individual member. Note that the honor of carrying these guidons is bestowed upon those Marines who displayed outstanding leadership qualities, motivation, and character, and were selected as the platoon honor graduates. The platoon honor graduates compete for the titles of series and company honor graduate. They are considered the top Marines graduating today and have demonstrated the highest potential for future leadership and responsibility in the Marine Corps. Guidons will now be returned to the drill instructors.
about hate. The honor graduates will not be presented. The Honor Graduates will not be presented a plaque by the Battalion Commander, Lieutenant Colonel M. Matthew Phelps, and the Battalion Sergeant Major, Sergeant Major Vitaly I. Holodov. Ladies and gentlemen, please hold your applause until all Honor Graduates have been recognized. Present up. The honor graduate for Platoon 3249 is Private First Class Kaisha E. De Weaver from Okinawa, Japan. The honor graduate for Platoon. The honor graduate for Platoon 3250 is Private First Class Jack B. Nettle from Germantown, Wisconsin. The honor graduate for Platoon 3251 is Private First Class Dylan Jacobson from Palmer, Alaska. The honor graduate for Platoon. The honor graduate for Platoon 3253 is Private First Class Seth Barris from Jonesboro, Arkansas. The honor graduate for Platoon 3254 and the company honor graduate is Lance Corporal Malika E. Foster Allen from San Bernardino, California. Lance Corporal Foster Allen is also the recipient of the Chesty Pool Award for his outstanding meritorious performance while in recruit training. And the honor graduate for Platoon, 3,255. And the series honor graduate is Private First Class, Roland Poole III, from St. George, Utah. Ladies and gentlemen, the honor, and gentlemen, the honor graduates of Lima Company. Company first sergeant will now give the command to the senior drill instructors to dismiss their platoons. Needless to say, this will be the most welcome command they have received throughout recruit training. Senior drill instructor, dismiss your 
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony.